Okay, you just saw calculations involving significant figures one in which we cover the rules for multiplying and dividing. Let's go over those. When multiplying and dividing quantities with varying number of significant figures, we learn that we must always round off the answers to the lowest number of significant figures. But what about adding and subtracting? Adding and subtracting are inherently different than multiplying and dividing. A few things here. For adding and subtracting, the decimal points must always be lined up. For instance, if I had to take 34.572 meters and multiply it by 2.3 meters, I don't have to line up any decimal points. That's good the way it is. I can start with 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 7 21, put down the 1, carry the 2. But if I want to take 34.572 meters and add 2.3 meters to it, that's right, I have to line up the decimal points. So the 2 comes down, the 7 comes down, it'd be 5 plus 3. You get the idea. Likewise with subtracting, you have to line up those decimal points. Okay? For adding and subtracting, the units must be the same. I have to have meters added and subtracted from meters. I can't take meters minus seconds. What would the units be? It wouldn't make any sense. I could take meters divided by seconds, and the units would be meters per second. I could take meters and multiply it by seconds. Meter seconds would be the answer for that. But I cannot take meters and subtract or add seconds. It makes no sense. The units have to agree. And if I take meters minus meters, the units will, of course, be meters. Third thing, adding and subtracting are easier to do in your head, much easier. For instance, if I said, what's 16 plus 13? I'm hoping you would say 29. If I said 16 minus 13, I'm hoping you would say 3. If I said 16 times 13, I'm thinking you would probably be saying, where's my calculator? If I said 16 divided by 13, I know you'd be looking for a calculator. So adding, subtracting, inherently easier. This is just to say, when it comes to rounding calculated values, it should make sense that adding and subtracting follow a different set of rules than those used for multiplying and dividing. So, what is the rounding rule for adding and subtracting? Well, let's start where we started before for multiplying and dividing, with an actual measurement, because that's what it's all based on, measurements and uncertainty. Here's a rectangle. We'll call that 83.2 millimeters. Remember that 2 is our guess. Our estimated digits there, we're certain of the 8 and the 3, we're guessing 2. When I turn it sideways, let's see, that looks about to be maybe 5.3, maybe 5.2, 5.4 millimeters, something in that range. Okay, so I'm going to define this now. Before we did area, now we're just going to talk about the sum. And the sum calculation is quite simple. Sum is going to be length plus width. So, here are some possible lengths. I said 83.2, but it could have been 83.1 or 83.3, and some possible widths that go along with it, 5.2, 5.3, 5.4. Notice how they only are different in that last place, so we consider those lengths all consistent. They only differ in that last estimated place, that last guess place. Likewise with our widths, they are consistent. They only disagree in that last digit, that last place. So, if we were following the rules for multiplying and dividing, when we add these together, we would think we want to round our answer off to just two sig figs, because we have three sig figs, two sig figs, two in our answer. But again, this is not multiplying and dividing, this is adding. Look what we get. We get 88.3, 88.5, 88.7. Those numbers are already consistent the way they are. You don't have to do anything. They don't, you don't have to round them. They are good, just as they are. That wasn't the case with multiplying and dividing. We had to round to get down to agreement where it was only different in that last place. Here, it came that way automatically. And if I define difference as the length minus the width, I'm going to have the same sort of thing. Here are a couple possible lengths, 83.1, 83.2, a couple pop possible widths I can subtract, 5.2, 5.4. I don't have to do all the combinations. Again, look at how they're all consistent with each other. And look at my answers. They're already consistent just the way they are. So you're probably thinking, Maybe the rule is you don't have to round. You don't have to change it at all. And about 90% of the time, you'd be correct. When you add and subtract, the answer in the calculator is very often the answer you're going to want to use. But there are some exceptions, and it's worth noting what they are. And they should make sense, because watch this. If I take this calculation here and write it one on top of the other, line up the decimal points, as we've been taught to do, look what I've got. I've got my... 83.1, I know the 8 and the 3, and I'm guessing the 1. 
in 5.2, I know the 5 for sure, I'm guessing the 2. Well, think about this. If I'm certain of the 83 and I'm certain of the 5, that means I'm going to be certain of the 88. And an estimated 1 and added to an estimated 2 will give us an estimated 3. It's good just the way it is. But, and here is the big question, what if your estimated digits are not in the same place? For instance, in 83.17, if I add 5.2, the calculator will give an answer of 88.37. But stop and think about that number. In 83.17, the 7 was our guess, and it came down, and it was a guess in the final answer, 88.37. If the 7 up top is a guess, certainly the 7 at the bottom has to be a guess. By guess, I mean an estimated digit. In 5.2, the 2 is our guess, and when I add that 2, a guess 2, to the 1 above it, and that 1 that's above it is a certain 1, it's a definite 1, but a definite 1 and a, an approximated 2 give us an approximated 3. So the answer 88.37 appears to have two guesses in it. We're not allowed to have two guesses. So here's the rule. When adding and subtracting, always round the answer off at the first estimated place. In this case, it would be the tenths place where the 3 is. 88.37, I'm not allowed to have two guesses, so I have to stop at that first estimated place, or that first guessed place. So it would be 88.4 millimeters. That's how that would round. Okay. Now, if you were counting significant figures on that one, you'd say, I've got four sig figs in the top number, two in the bottom. I want to have two in my answer. It doesn't apply. These are not multiplication and division problems. They're adding and subtracting problems, and they follow a different set of rules. So again, the rule is when adding and subtracting, always round the answer off at the first estimated place. We'll do some more problems to show you what, they, what we mean by that. Okay. So. Here's one, 32.68 grams, I'm going to add 5.45 grams. And this is what would happen. You're dealing with a scale that can read to the hundredth of a gram. You use it two times. You want to know what those two masses are going to add up to. This makes total sense. Your calculator would give an answer of 38.13 grams. Since the 32.68 grams has its guess in the hundredths place, that's the eight. And the 5.45 has its guess in the hundredths place, that's that last five there. Your answer should have its guess in the last place, the hundreds place, and there it is, 38.13 already does. This answer is good to go. And as I said, that's often going to be the case. You don't have to do anything with your answer. It's good just the way it is. Here's another one, 24.531 seconds. And we're going to subtract 24.510 seconds. Okay? Now, if you start to count sig figs, you're thinking five sig figs in the first number, five sig figs in the second number, our answer is going to have five. No, no. Don't go that way. This is a subtraction problem, not multiplication division. There's what the calculator gives us for the answer, 0.021 seconds. It only has two significant figures, but that's not the important thing. The important thing is where it has its guess. Our first number had its guess in the thousandths place. That's where the one is, in the thousandths place. And the second number also had its guess there. Don't forget that zero after decimal point is significant. So the second number has its guess in the thousandths place. There's agreement. They both agree then the answer should have its guess in the thousands place. It already does, so once again, we're good to go. And think about this. We use the same stopwatch, this very precise stopwatch. 24.531 seconds was our first answer. 24.510 seconds our second. We want to know what the difference is in those two. We simply subtract, and the answer is good to go. So these problems like this one, where they don't have their guess in the same place, they're a bit contrived because, I mean, if I use a scale that could go to the hundreds place and got a number like 32.68 grams, why did I use that same scale to measure the thing that was 5 grams? I mean, 5 grams is very approximate. But there are some problems where you're adding something from a calculation to a given mass where these do come into play. It's not completely contrived. It might seem a little bit ridiculous, but let's take a look at this one. 32.68 grams plus 5 grams. Our calculator would give the answer of 37.68. But that 5 grams could have been a 6 or a 7. That's what that means, is 5 grams. It's not a perfect number at all. It's very imprecise. In 32.68, the 8 is our guess. It's in the hundreds place. But in 5 grams, the 5 is our guess. It's in the ones place. So between ones place and hundredths place, no question about it. The ones place is the first guess place. First, as you moved left to right, across the screen. 
Okay, that says you read a number. The ones place comes before the hundreds place. That means our answer has to have its guess in the ones place. So 37, but look what it's followed by, 0.68. So that would round up to 38 grams, okay? And again, that answer is reflecting the level of imprecision in the weak measurement. That was the five grams. We don't count sig figs, though. We didn't say four sig figs and one sig fig, therefore our answer should have one. That was multiplying and dividing. Here we look at where the guess is. The guess is in the hundreds place. The guess is in the ones place. My answer should have its guess in the ones place. Okay, is this making sense? Let's try another one. Here's a subtraction problem. 3,748.5 milliliters, and I'm going to subtract 130 milliliters. Now remember, 130, that zero is not a significant figure. 130 means 130, maybe 140. So that three is our guess there. The calculator would give an answer of 3618.5 milliliters. Let's think about that. In the 3748.5, the 0.5 is our guess. It's in the tenths place. In 130, the three is our guess. That's in the tens place. So we have to choose between the tenths place and the tens place. Well, certainly, as you move left to right across the number, we come to the tens place. It's the first guess place, the larger guess place. That means our answer has to have its guess in the tens place. So, yeah, 36, 18, the one would round up to give us 3620. I hope you weren't thinking 362. There's no way that 3618 could round off the 362. It has to keep the same magnitude. It just has to change its level of precision. So 3618, 3620, those are almost the same size number but you not just chop it off and say 362. You've lost a whole bunch of milliliters if you've done that.